Good morning, folks. Today's a day where it helps to look back in time. Will be a theme. Pretty filament dance on the northern solar polar crown ended in a breakdown, but we've got space weather to discuss, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was calm but brings items of note into play. We now see bright areas across the sun and another southern coronal hole. The biggest attention grabber is still behind the limb, biggest umbral field production by far. What you can't see here, only on stereo A, is the northern coronal hole riding just in front of it. We'll see that one tomorrow, but here's the solar wind. Top left, purple line is still plateaued, and that's indicating we're in the faster coronal hole stream, but it is moderate intensity only. Plasma speed isn't cracking 600 kilometers per second, and so the KP4, yellow instability marks bottom right, it's about all we're getting. Let's take a quick peek at the polar vortices. North is tightened here before it'll break down in the warmer months to come. It did tighten, by the way, very quickly when the coronal holes produced those geomagnetic storms last week. Over the coming next few weeks, we'll see the southern vortex begin to build as the semi-annual oscillation takes hold just after the equinox. Folks, this new paper is a pretty grant baiting product out of the Shill factory, but one of its charts caught my eye. Did you know that in the late 90s, the world was curbing pollution, even having it drop back down slightly, and then the Kyoto Protocol happened, and what was supposed to kill emissions saw the greatest rise yet. We had actually gotten our polluting acts together again over the last decade until the Paris Agreement was adopted and emissions shot back up again. Folks, in addition to the climate stuff we usually show, their model failures, the grant baiting, they're ignoring the sun and cosmic rays and the changing Earth's magnetic field. A more insidious truth can be found in China's control over the climate story, far more than most of us realize, and those emission booms after the climate agreements are China picking up the slack from the rest of the world, creating rapid expansion of their field sectors, and it is one of a number of ways the CCP has used science to attack the rest of the world, which is where politics isn't politics anymore. It's in our realm. Speaking of which, you'll recall at the start of the month we shared the top climate journal on Earth indicating that Pacific droughts are a function of natural variability patterns. This is critical because we've been told for over a decade it's all our fault. Today. We follow up in that same number one journal with the same conclusion made about precipitation extremes and daily rainfall averages. This is important not only for the United States, which was the focus of those studies, but for the entire world. Because many of these long-term patterns, especially those relating to the monsoons, the intertropical convergence zones, and overall rainfall, are indeed not being worked as much by us as they are these long-term cycles. Most of those long-term cycles are worked by the sun and its longer decadal to centennial scales with about a 20 to 30 year lagged effect. The grand solar maximum of the 1900s really gave us an unfair view of where the world is going to be heading. The trends are set to reverse and put the world back to more like it was most of the last millennium. So for example, a random little place called Penrose, Colorado was once one of the apple capitals of the country. Then the mid-1900s and the grand solar maximum began a drop in precipitation that has turned the region into something of a high desert. Data suggests it spent centuries in the old paradigm, which is where it's going once again for a few centuries more. Looking back again to the beginning of the month, we have been tracking the record fast earth rotation here this year, and they keep updating us faster and faster. Less than a week since our last look, we're seeing the same fastest day, but an overall quickening of the days to amplified excess milliseconds to spare at the end of the year, and a faster average day by another nudge as well. Faster and faster, pretty much every time we check. Now you're not going to feel this, not until the crust does. This is part of the predicted changes in Earth's ongoing cyclical catastrophe, and they are predicted to continue. An interesting article out of Princeton next, one I've been thinking on a while here, and while some of it is still a jury-out situation between my ears, something I agree with is a questioning of certain aspects of the foundation underlying how science works these days, and the idea that with so many mouths, the only real way to differentiate the truth is via correct prediction. In their case, they're hoping to do better fusion. In our case, well, each of you genuinely has the option of seeking out believing and putting faith in detractors of us or anyone else. If you haven't seen our video from Friday, all about predictions, watch it. If you saw it already, I hope you can grasp the totality and importance of it, 
because as I said, this is no longer some fun little game of who gets the science right. This is what happens and who makes it into the next age. It's why we're here. It's why we select the topics we select and why our future is at Observer Ranch, which, by the way, is in a random little place called Penrose, Colorado. See what I did there? We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.